great. So this is just a picture of St. Martin, just to give you a sense of the location. Um, it, it was um, two years ago now that, that uh, Arts of Dementia first contacted us and, and suggested that we put together a set of workshops together um, uh, to explore uh, the possibility of working more, more, more jointly moving forward. And, and initially I responded very positively. And the reason I did was because we'd already, it was a coincidence, but we'd already started thinking about how running workshops might be not something that we did as extra to uh, what the students were doing on their degree and, and MA degrees, but rather that it became integral to their practice. So the students think of a workshop as a way of exploring ideas that they might be exploring in the studio, but they're exploring it with a group of participants. So they get a, a sort of hive mind, if you like, a group of people who might also um, have things to say about whatever subject the students are thinking about, and that becomes incredibly uh, fruitful and positive for the students. And hopefully, because it's positive for the students, they give um, lots of uh, enthusiasm and, and good ideas, and that then becomes positive for the participants. Um, uh, we didn't have experience at Central St. Martin's uh, uh, working with this particular group. Um, and so there was a little bit of um, trepidation at first. And, and, and also the first um, time we did it, we were in uh, lockdown. So it was all via Zoom, which again, posed all sorts of challenges. But actually I think it, it's perhaps partly because of that, that it was so, um, that we took it on with such enthusiasm because A, most of our students were very isolated. It wasn't just the participants who might have been feeling isolated, but our students were as well. And, and this was a, a chance to get to, to meet a group of people who they might not ordinarily have a chance uh, to meet, certainly not during lockdown. And, well, I'll show you. Let me show you a film because it's, it's, it's the best way perhaps to show it. This is the inside of the building, just to show you how sort of um, bonkers and slightly alarming the building is. But if I take you to the, to the next slide, it, it's one of the films we did in lockdown. It was the first time that we'd worked together where we got a sense that we'd started to figure out what, what how we might develop it. Uh, oh, well, that's right over my bed, and it's a, a, a view in the forest that I, I feel I'm like unwell. Whether it is the same one or not, I don't know, but I feel I've stepped over that little stream many times. Um, I, I have a friend who's an artist, and I commissioned her to do this canvas, um, but... Okay, the, we're in the kitchen, but this painting was... So I'll stop there for a second. Um, the, the, the film is, the instructions to produce the film are we're all in the room together in a Zoom room and participants are instructed to make a, a sort of tube of paper with, with a piece of A4 paper and to hold it to the um, camera, so the camera of the Zoom, and then to find things in the room to discuss. And partly, I guess, because it was our art students who suggested it, partly, I guess, because everyone was coming to an arts event, everyone seemed to focus on art as the subject that was being discussed. So you ended up with this sort of glimpses into people's living rooms where people were simply talking about the arts. So there was this sort of coherency to it. It was very surprising and seemed to open up something. And it also used Zoom as a tool for making rather than simply as a sort of awful reality of life that was sort of permanently behind the glass uh, of the Zoom camera. Um, I just said earlier, but I'll expand on it now. Um, what I didn't want it to feel like was that we were doing some sort of benevolent kind act in, in running some, some workshops for someone else. That, that's, I don't think there's any, any use to anyone. I don't think anyone wants a benevolent act done upon them. What we were really wanting to do with our students is get them to understand what the workshop could be and why it was intrinsic to their practice so that they wouldn't dumb it down. It doesn't suddenly become sugar paper and potato prints because they're doing a workshop. It, it's the work they're doing in the studio. It continues the ideas, the themes, the materials they're using in the studio, but they're simply taking those materials out into a different context. Sometimes they have to think about how they adapt them because if you're doing it via Zoom and you're used to doing painting, then what is it that you're going to do to it that allows that to happen? happen and, and there was lots of sort of posting packages <laughs> at breakneck speed to, to have participants have the right materials and sometimes it's it's about finding a way in which a group might do something that you're used to doing by yourself but what we found that for our students when they did the project they came back to their studio really much better informed about the realities of what they were exploring because they'd had a whole set of people respond well, respond with confusion, with excitement to, to the ideas that they were placing. And that's as a result of having thought it through with the group. We were also, I mean, I have to say, incredibly lucky in that um, the on both cases, both sets of workshops that we've done, the group have been um, patient beyond belief and unbelievably enthusiastic. And 
in many ways acted as almost like sort of critics for the for the students' work. So they 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 in a very kind way, but they they talk to the students about things, extend them, push them a little bit, and and so there was a real sense that. Um, we both sides were getting something, hopefully something positive out of it. We were creating an environment in which we opened the doors of the art school, because it's not always the case. Often art schools can seem like they're, you know, certainly the one here feels like it might have landed from outer space. And it's a, it's a bit of a sort of, you know, fortress. And, and this is a way of opening up the doors to, to, to the art school saying, actually, it should be a facility for everyone, for the local community. Um, it's, it's a way of bringing together, um, well, in this case, a group of young people who are our um, second and third years on the BA with a group of slightly less young people. And that's always quite nice to have a sort of mix of, of ages. Um, in terms of the experience of art that people had had, art can be quite strange in that if, you, if you've always done art, it feels incredibly easy and accessible. But if you haven't, you can very quickly get to a point where people, I think, feel that they, I can't draw, I can't do this, and, and they're not being able to. And this was a way of sort of opening and democratizing access to the arts. Um, and show you it. Oh, there. I'm going to show you just a couple of quick glimpses of other films because it, it shows you how we did things. When I was when I was a young lad, we were about to seven or eight years old. In the summer, we had summer holidays from school. We used to have well, my mother and stepfather used to take us down in the car down to Devon. Very nice, nice and sunny, very good sand, and we used to go into the into the sea and have a good time sloshing about there. And when we came out, we were given an ice cream. Well, I actually can't remember. This is a sort of, it's one of my problems. I'm right? not alive. But you said that you remembered cycling. I was, I had a bike. Um, uh, uh, my first bike was, uh, I was, what, eight years old? Yes, well, uh, I won't play the whole film because it goes on, but but what we're doing there is it's it's not dissimilar to tunnels, but it's an, uh, to the last one, but it sort of extends it. It's rather than a, a tube, it's a sheet of reflective paper, and so what you're getting is the eye of the person talking through the hole, but also reflections of the room um, from the from the monitor. Um, a lot of our students were interested in using memory, and that was something that again seemed really pertinent and useful when working with arts for dementia, where we were having to learn again what memory might mean for different groups depending on how much access they had to their memories and so it really did it genuinely pushed the students in a very exciting way um oh, go back and there's just one this is playing. one second What, what this one is, is kind of gives you an idea of what happened when the group it's, came it's into uh, CSM to start working with it directly in the building. between the two bricks. It's, it's, a, it's a sort of cinematic role of uh, images that, that come through, we're calling it clouds. But it's what's interesting about it is that the, it's a series of objects that um, participants were asked to bring in, objects that for some reason had some sort of personal association. The object is then placed on a 3D object, placed on a sheet of plastic, and then it's dusted with um, talcum powder. The talcum powder then becomes an image of the object or, or a trace of the object, and then that's projected using an OHP projector. And the participants then, when they see their object, tell us something about the object, share some of, share some information about the object and why it might be uh, personally significant. And so here, what we had at, available to us when the participants came in was completely different. We're certainly not just limited to, to Zoom, but we can actually work with objects, turning objects into images and films. We were very keen that the outputs mix analog and digital, because again, so, so often, um, the digital is, is, is a realm that seems to be one that's quite exclusive. Um, and we were very keen that that should be part of what we were doing here, that we wouldn't simply you know, do art as painting, but it could be art as all those things. And then the last film I'm gonna show, because I know I'm running out of time, is um, looking through a drawing. Again, we start with a drawing, the drawing gets turned into a sculpture, the sculpture gets placed on a turntable, those move, and that then becomes a, a film when it's filmed. All of the participants' drawings are placed together into a set, a sort of forest of drawings, if you like. Um, but, but it was really um, 
intriguing to see how might we make collaboratively uh, as a group and that's that includes the the participants the facilitators the um the students who were there just to chat and listen um yeah, okay I'll, I'll stop there one okay so two last things just very very quickly i promise first is that we're doing another set of workshops coming up and we've ventured even further into to the digital realm we're, we're moving into um virtual reality and um and sort of digital world building for this one and again we 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 think we've got the methodology sort of worked out so that it's absolutely um uh, straightforward i always think that if i can do it anyone can do it because i'm really not digitally minded uh, and, and we're really excited about this coming up very very soon um and we've got an exhibition of the work done by the students, by the participants, um, all missing together. It's happening in the Windows Gallery, and I've got a date for it now, Penny. It looks like it's going to be happening at the end of June. So we've secured that. And so that'd be great to sort of see all that work together, because there's the amount of work that was produced over a very, very short period of time was really quite incredible. And, and each session was run by different students, or each activity was run by different students. They've got all their own activities in relation to it, and we're showing their work from their studio in relation to the work that was made together. And so hopefully that'll be a nice, a nice way of sort of uh, celebrating what we've what we've done and yeah hope the relationship continues to grow that's it absolutely thank you so much alex i know the participants they were really wanting to take everything away with them at the end of the workshops and we were like we would like to do an exhibition though so could we just keep some of them and it was it's a really tricky balance people want to hold on to them as the kind of products their work but it will be great to have a proper exhibition in your beautiful windows gallery we were doing some photogrammetry, so we were actually digitally photographing works in the round so that they could take some things away and then we told onto the digital asset. So yeah, it was, it was a, a little bit that, but that was fun, that was good. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much, Alex. So now Anna, so Anna is the, um, oh, go on, Alex. I was just going to say the last thing that we also had, we also had loads of free tutors effectively through Arts for Dementia because as people entered and left the building, they liked wandering through the studios just to see what the students were up to. And I'd often have to go and fish out <laughs> participants who'd been talking to students for perhaps half an hour on the nature of their work. And all these students got free tutorials. It was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Alex.